All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Game is a Game podcast. I'm here, as always, with my little bro, Eric. Uh, we're going ahead and break down the Eastern Conference. Uh, definitely hit subscribe. Check out uh, our other videos. Uh, we broke down the Western Conference earlier. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start breaking down conference semifinals. It looks like the, the uh, pictures are starting to get a little bit clearer in the East, definitely. Uh, we're also going to be doing the good, the bad, the ugly, which is our version of our off-season review. Uh, see where these teams are headed. Uh, we have a couple of teams that we're going to talk about now that we think are packing their bags, ready for Cancun. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start breaking those teams down as well as the teams that didn't make out the playoffs. So check that out. Definitely hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when those new videos post. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, we'll start it with the, I, I believe, probably um, the... Uh, Let's see, let's see series we'll start with. We'll go ahead and start with uh, just a quick wrap up of the, the Bucks and the Miami Heat series. Uh, so they end up getting swept on Saturday. Uh, I think that we both talked about it as nauseum, but I think going forward, we should talk a little bit about uh, the Dante DiVincenzo injury and how that affects the Bucks going forward. Uh, so it looks like Pat Connaughton is going to take his minutes. A li- for all intents and purposes, it looks like the Brooklyn and the Boston series is over. Uh, do you think that this hurts uh, the Bucks' chance? And we'll get more into uh, talking about them in this, the, the conference semifinal breakdown, but do you think this hurts the Bucks' chances going forward? And was there anything that you saw in particularly in that Bucks heat series that stuck out to you? Um, I definitely think that Don, uh, DiVincenzo is a nice player and he is a player that in their rotation and they count on, but I think that's not an injury that they won't be able to overcome. I don't think that um, they can't overcome that. Uh, I think that between uh, Forbes, Connaughton, and, uh, you know, the players that are already in their rotation, uh, Chris Milton, Drew Holiday, uh, P.J. Tucker, they can't pick up the slack and uh, uh, make, you know, make up for that. Um, I think that, they, that they'll be able to figure it out. Um, now that they have some time off, they can uh, – uh, uh, Bud has a chance to um, – you know, go back and watch some of the film and see what, you know, which players he's going to insert into that role. So I think that they will be fine. Um, outside of that, um, <clears throat> when we go back and we talk about the series, um, I know the saying is I don't like to beat a dead horse, but I like to beat a dead horse in this, in, 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 in this situation. I'm going to say the same thing that I've said all season. You had an opportunity to change for James Harden and you decided that you wanted to act like you were smarter than everyone else. I think that that was a clear trade. That was an easy trade. If you if, if the if the deal is centered around Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson, I think that you do that trade 100 times out of 100 times. Um, so the thing that stood out to me in this series is Miami's arrogance. You allowed, uh, you know, your run in the bubble to make you think that you were this team where, you know, like they, like I just kept hearing the heat culture, the heat culture. Um, and I just think that's a, that's a lie that they sold themselves. Um, again, I, I said that in one of the first episodes that uh, if you look at Miami, the last 15 to 20 years, you've only been a contender when you've made a trade or you've signed a, a, a marquee free agent. You've not been known as this team like Oklahoma city, where you drafted Kevin Durant, you drafted Russell Westbrook, you drafted Serge Ibaka, you draft, you didn't, you, you, you didn't do that. So no. I don't get, I don't get how you can sell yourself that lie and really believe that. So again, yeah. when you have the, I think let this be a learning lesson for other teams from the league that when you have those, that opportunity to trade for a top five player and put your team as a serious contender, um, you make that trade 10 out of 10 times and I'm going to leave yeah. it at that. Yeah. With uh, them. And, you know, and then also I think, you know, spills over Tyler hero, but it's also Bam and Jimmy, you know, uh, Jimmy is a guy that talked a lot. He got a lot of accolades and praise and acclaim for the way that he played in the finals versus the, the Lakers. Um, he talked a big game going into this playoffs and he has something up his sleeve and don't worry about it. I got it. And I mean, for him to be get swept, I mean, I think this has to be an indictment on him. I mean, you know, there was a, a raging debate on whether is Jimmy Butler a true superstar or not. I don't think true superstars get swept. You see a season, uh, the series that's going on that we'll talk about uh, shortly with Brooklyn and Boston. You know, Boston shouldn't be in that series. They, this, this series should be over. But Jason Tatum stepped his game up to the, a, a level to where he was able to steal a game. 
Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, these games have not been competitive. Those games, those last four games with the sweep, the sweep was not indicative, if that makes any sense, on how much of a mismatch it was after game no, one. No, I know. I, I, not close. And, you know, um, I would sweep say. Is not, I would, it's I, not I, even I, a bigger word. That should be like a. a, a, a thing, <laughs> the thing about it is a that. Sweeping. The thing about it is that um, I would have to disagree with the first part that you said, that some superstars, they don't get swept. Because there, there are there are times where you could be a superstar like last year, Joel Embiid. Obviously, the bubble, you know, people have. Yeah, uh-huh. Joel Embiid was swept by the the Celtics. But what I will they agree, had an injury. With, you know, what I will agree about what you said is that um, saying that Miami got swept isn't indicative. Doesn't really tell the story of what happened in this series. That's they got demolished. <laughs> they were completely outclassed. They had no chance in any of the games that they played besides Game One they did not look like they belonged in the playoffs. They just did yeah. not look like they belonged there. So yeah. saying that they got swept is not – um it w- wouldn't even do justice of what really happened in the series. Mm-hmm. And I think that is an indictment on Jimmy Butler um, because he didn't play well. I don't – I didn't see any game he really played well or, or any game where he really had an imprint on the game. Um, and the, the game that was close, game one, he was terrible in that game. It was terrible. So, uh-huh. Terrible in game one. So, and if they could have stole that game one, that could have changed the whole series. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, we'll break them down in their offseason. But, yeah, Miami, there's a lot of questions. And and, and I, I, things I, I are not we should, we should, well. We should, we should wait till we get to their offseason breakdown. But there's not even a lot to say. Like I said, um, people can disagree and say, you know, they did the right thing. And you don't know um, uh, what, you know, Tyler Harrell is going to be. And. You don't know what, you know, the other player is precious is going to be and what Kendrick Nunn is going to be. You don't, you can know. And I think you can, you can say that about every team. I could say that about it, about every team in the league. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some teams in the league that will tell you they don't care what that player is going to be because that's too much of an unknown. But what Mm -hmm. I do know today is that James Harden, James Harden is a top five player. And if you take LeBron James and Kevin Durant out of the NBA, it's, he's arguably the best player. You could argue. You could arguably say and you could argue. You could. He can. He has a case that after LeBron, like save him Durant, that he's yeah. the best player in the NBA. When you're, when you're not talking about trading um, any top 15 players or any cup, uh, young and upcoming players that are at the caliber of Zion Willis, Zion Williamson, or John Morant, or players of that nature, um, because you feel like James Harden is an older player. If you're not talking about something like that, I think you immediately go and you pack those players' bags and you go get that player. You, yeah, you, know, you don't get those chances every day in the NBA to acquire a top five player, and they miss the bus. That's just as simple as that. Yeah, they miss the bus. Uh, you know, one thing that they have to be encouraged by, and we'll break this down later, is the play of none. I think he played well, but besides that, I don't think anybody really played well. We'll go down to the next series, the Brooklyn versus the Boston series. Uh, Brooklyn uh, won game four handily. Uh, Boston was without uh, Robert Williams and Kimba Walker. That Kimba Walker contract day by day looks like more of a disaster going on. It looked like uh, Brooklyn toyed with this team um, in this game. I mean, once again, the bright spot is Jason Tatum. He seems like he's ascended uh, to another atmosphere where you can start talking to him about him like one of the greats in this league, a perennial All-NBA player. Uh, so for Boston, and we'll break them down, it's about what do you surround him and Jalen Brown with? Is that pairing the best pairing? Maybe you start to think about breaking that up, uh, and maybe you can see if you can get pennies on the penny uh, with Kemba Walker and that contract. Uh, but for Brooklyn, I think that this is game a good warmer for them. Uh, I was listening to the Bill Simmons podcast, and they mentioned that they didn't take their starters out until two minutes left in the game. Um, and I think that they're just trying to get reps. Um, that series versus uh, Milwaukee, I think, is going to be one of the more exciting series of the playoffs. That's not the finals, depending on who gets their finals and the health. Um, so I think that they're just trying to get reps. Uh, that series is really fascinating. This is Brooklyn Boston series, once again, you mentioned it. There's yeah, not really much to talk about to it. I, you know, shout out to Boston for fighting and coming out and playing hard every night. Um, you know, I love that 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 grittiness and. Um, I love them for coming out and fighting and, 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 and giving their all in this series. Obviously, Jason Tatum has ascended, and I think we as Boston fans, we have that to look forward to with Jalen Brown coming back uh, next season. But it, 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 it's just simple. Boston has to make changes. They have to improve their roster. They have to find a way to 
get better players there. Ultimately, you get better players there and you find another uh, major piece to add to Brown and Jason Tatum, um, they will be fine. I think they'll be fine. They just need to improve the roster. We'll see what happened with, with Kemba Walker, but um, he just has shown has not shown the ability to stay upright since he's been here. He just cannot stay healthy. Um, so we will have to see what that looks like going forward um, with a early off season that will kind of give him some time to go and rehab that knee and, and uh, rehab other um, early injuries that he's had throughout the season. And maybe he'll come back um, upright, but ultimately if they do bring back that core of Tatum, Brown and Kemba, I just think that you have to surround them with better players. You have to surround them with shooting. They didn't really have any of that um, this, um, this season, you know, they brought in Fournier late, but, um, they have to go and get better players. They have to. They're, Danny doesn't really have a choice um, unless that window is going to shorten, that is going to shut close pretty soon. And what you don't want to happen is uh, you don't want Tatum or Brown to come in and say, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm ready. I think mm-hmm. I've done what I, I can. And a lot of, a lot of think, teams need to be careful with that. And, and I think that's where Boston fans, you know, they a lot of people think, oh, well, you're such a negative fan. It's like, no, I, I deal in reality. The reality <laughs> is if you keep sending them out there with this kind of roster and you, you and, it, it, and you expect them to win. And we know that they're, that you're asking your players, your star players to do too much. What can ultimately happy happen is a, your, your superstar come in and say, you know what? I've had enough here. I want to go to Utah and go play with Donovan Mitchell, or I want to go to uh, whatever team it may be. The like, Lakers. I want to go to the Lakers or I want to uh-huh. go to Phoenix and play with mm-hmm. Devin Booker and Aiton. Mm-hmm. I want to go to you know, people act like uh, Jason Tatum is not, you know, friends with all of these players in the league. And somebody's in his ear like, man, look, bro, you see Kyrie left Boston. You see how they did their stars in the past. And they're not. People don't act like that. These conversations don't happen. That happened. Yeah. You know, Anthony Davis didn't want to come there. And you see how they, you know, how people, you know, how they be doing in Boston. Yeah. And you don't think that. You'd be, you be a fool to think that players are not recruiting him. You'd be a fool. fool. You're a fool to think that players are not in his ear already. You're a fool. Yeah. So, be a fool, yeah. So I just deal in reality. So it's not mm-hmm. that I'm just trying to be this negative fan. It's just no, they need to go in and improve the roster. But obviously for Brooklyn, um, not to spend too much time on the Celtics. Obviously Brooklyn, like you said, they're just trying to get reps. They're trying to figure out what makes them comfortable and, and what they can do. But I think that ultimately, you know, Boston wasn't um, a serious opponent for them. But they're gonna have their hands full with Milwaukee. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. think Giannis, Middleton. Crew and, and PJ, they're not scared of them. They're not going to be scared of them. They're not. They're they're going to come in ready to play, and they're going to have their hands full with Milwaukee. I think that's going to be a very close series. Um, I think they're going to have their hands full. And, yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely. I can't wait to break that down. So definitely check out for that. We're going to have that up uh, in the next couple of days, uh, probably tomorrow. So check out for that. Definitely look out for that. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about Philly and uh, Washington. Uh, real quick game that's actually going on behind us. Uh, Philly looks like they're up by five. Uh, last time I turned back and checked. Um, I'm, once again, there's not really too much to say about this. I think this was a bad draw from Washington. I would have preferred to see them versus Brooklyn. Uh, there was a team that got hit hard by COVID. Uh, I think a bright spot for them is uh, the, fi- the play of Gafford. Uh, it looks like they definitely have a big of the future. Uh, so I think that you just roll this back. It's just depending on Bill wanting to come back, all indications that he wants to come back. I think he's played well this series. Uh, Russ has st- struggled, but uh, he's had an ankle injury that he's dealing with. Um, I think cause for concern is the way that Bertans has played this whole season pretty much after having a stellar uh, 2019, uh, which got him this massive contract for the way that he's looked this season. It's just been been awful. Um, on the Sixers side, there's really not really much to report um, that I can see that stood out. It looks like Joel and B is primed and ready. Uh, I think that they got a great draw. We'll talk about that next series and who they're going to get. It looks like it's going to definitely be Atlanta. But um, I don't think he's going to face pretty much any uh, team that he has to worry about himself or concern himself with stopping him until uh, the conference final. So uh, I think that they, yeah, these I would series don't – yeah. These yeah. are just, to me, they're just reps for Ben Simmons. Yeah. Uh, ben yeah. Simmons, are you getting your free throw reps in? Are you going to ever take a jump shot? Uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm I'm done holding my breath about that, but just getting some confidence for him because he started game one very terribly. I think it took him to game three till he made a free throw. He was like 0 of 11. 
So these are reps for him, playoff reps for him that I think is best. But what were your thoughts on the series? Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, Washington, um, you just have to be hopeful um, as uh, someone in the front office or as a fan because, you know, with the play of Russell Westbrook throughout the season, and um, I think that you would have to say to yourself, okay, Bradley Bill, when he looks to the right, he looks and he says, okay, at least I, we, got, we got Russ. Okay, we have somewhere to start at. We got Russ, we got me, um, we have Gafford. Uh, a nice addition that we uh, that we uh, uh, we found in that trade. Um, Thomas Bryant's going to be coming back. Uh, uh, Debbie, the rookie, is going to be coming back. We just need to improve our roster. We need to find a way to improve our roster. So I think that, um, you know, like I said, Bradley Bill, you have to be hopeful that he will still be intrigued uh, about what is going on in the roster based on having Russell Westbrook because that is a start. You, there, you have somewhere to start with. So um, they just have to improve their roster, but they have to do it. They don't. They ha- they don't have time. Um, you, you you don't have time to wait and say, oh, we're, well, we're going to have this pick. We're going to draft this player. No, they have to go out and make uh, a serious move. They have to make a splash to get um, another player or two of significance. There, it doesn't have to be a superstar talent, but they have to get a serious player in the building. Um, one yeah, player, it- one player that. Um, I would love to see there. I don't know how the contract will work, but a player of like Buddy Hill's caliber, a player they just need some. Sh- they need some serious shooting. Yeah, um, I'm not a fan of Buddy Hill. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of Buddy. Not necessarily Hill. Buddy Buddy Hill, but a player of uh, of of that sense that doesn't have to come in and be a superstar, doesn't have to come in and and ask to do much, but a player that has a good offensive game that they can pair and put on the court that can provide them spacing and provide them scoring. I think that you just yeah. the Sixer series that they don't I mean, they have those two young wings in Avdia and we'll break it down uh, in the good, the bad, the ugly, their off season breakdowns that we're going to start this week. So check out for those, but they have those two young wings and the hope is that they get better. But uh, you know, in the meantime, you do have Westbrook who's, you know, in the, 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 the peak of his career, uh, you have Bradley Brill that's starting to get in the prime of his career as well. So you're getting these two individuals that you, you start, you need something now. You need something today, now, now. To, to, and, to and the thing for Philly, uh, Philly, obviously, they've looked great defensively. There's not much to say. Um, they've been able to make shots. Seth Curry, uh, Danny Green, Tobias Harris, they've all made shots. They've all played well. Um, it looks like, you know, um, we're not going to say the series is over, but um, the Hawks are now up 3-1, and we'll get to their series after that. Yeah, so, we'll go ahead and get to it right now. Yeah. Um, That's but, you have to be, you have to be encouraged um, because I think Embiid is going to eat in that series um, if they do get the get the Hawks if the Hawks are able to finish off the Knicks and I think that knowing Doc Rivers um, he's going to hunt Trey Young on defense um, yeah he's going to make Trey Young have to do something on defense you're not going to just sit still on Seth Curry I think they're going to run him in that pick and roll they're going to get him involved and I think that they'll try to get Ben Simmons some post touches against Trey Young they'll find a way to hunt him. So, uh, yeah, let's yeah. Go ahead and- I mean, we, yeah, we go ahead and break that down right now. I mean, I think that that series, the Hawks Knicks series, this is a series that a lot of people had a lot of uh, interest about how that series is going to shake out. Uh, it was good to see the Knicks fans, the Knicks crowd. I do think the Knicks have some positives that they can gain out of this series. But this series is over. Uh, they've obviously been outmatched. Uh, if you take away that series, uh, game two, where Atlanta, I think, missed like seven or eight straight threes, wide open looks. I think this series would have been a sweep. Uh, we talked about it in the last one. There's 18 to 82 game players. There's 16 game players. And I think Julius Randles definitely falls into the, the, uh, the, the former. I mean, he's a player that I think dominated, most of food player in the league. You don't want to take anything away from him. He's worked on his game and he's improved. But I don't think that he has the advantages to really be a number one player on a championship thing. I don't even think he could be a number two player on the championship plan. And that's no knock to him. But I just don't think he has the advantages. We've talked about it. He's an energy player. Um, he's a bully ball player who doesn't really post up. So you're seeing switch uh, where the teams, they're not really hard doubling him, but they're just rotating bigs to him when he comes into the lane and he's having trouble finishing over Capella in size. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, Tibbs is an old school coach. He doesn't believe in this small ball, not playing a big man. So uh, Randall's always going to be paired with another big man, which is allows any team that's playing them to have their big on the court 
And Julius Randle has always struggled to finish over size. Uh, he's improved his jump shot this offseason, but it's a very slow developing shot. But if you watch him play in these games, you know, he it's a big wind up to get those shots up. And that airspace that you have in the regular season just doesn't happen in the, the postseason. I think another advantage that the Knicks had in the regular season that other teams didn't have is they never had a massive COVID outbreak. Um, I think except for Alex Burks, they never had one of their major players get down for COVID for a long period of times or have those massive breakouts that affected uh, a Washington and a team like that. Another advantage for them was they didn't play in the bubble. So this is a team that plays with a lot of energy. Uh, you're playing teams that are coming out of the bubble of two months break. And this is a team that plays with energy and defensive discipline. And they didn't have that energy deficit coming into the league. So I think you put this all in the brew together. I think it was a nice season. It was a nice story. We'll talk about in their offseason breakdown because I do think this pertains to good things for them going forward. But if you talk about the, the Knicks right now, um, I, I definitely think that they're obviously outclassed in this series. Julius Randle um, is eligible for an extension this offseason. I would not give him anything longer than a year or two, um, or a year with a out in two years. But uh um, I, I, you know, not once again, no knock on Julius Randle. He's worked on his game, but he's obviously showed he's not a player that you can build around um, going forward. And you also have to be disappointed in the play of R.J. Barrett. I don't see much progression in him. Uh, Kevin Knox is a no-show. It looks like that pick is a waste. It looked like Frankie Nittle killing that pick is a waste. Obi Toppin, we're, you know, we're not really seeing anything out of him, even though I think that I have liked his play so far as a three, as a wing. You know, he came out as a four, but he, I think he can play the wing. But uh, I, I do think that this is a good foundation. But as far as pieces to go forward, besides maybe quickly, I, I think you have to be really disappointed what's going on. Um, on the Atlanta side, I'll make this quick. I, I think Trey Young has been awesome. You know, I've been a big supporter of his. I think he's always been attacked unfairly. These are guys uh, in the media because they love Luca and they want to seem right on Luca felt that like they needed to attack Trey Young, which I think that it doesn't have to be this zero sum game. I mean, you can't, you can't say that he's been, he was the worst defender in the league last year. So uh, let's couple that with what you're saying. No, you no, no, no. He, okay. He he's a bad, he you know, he's a bad defender. That's there's, there's no doubt about it, but um, you know, it's not like Luca is a great defender either. Um, you know, he, it's not like he's the greatest defender either. There's a lot of bad defenders in the NBA. I think offensively, when you're talking about the greatness of a quote unquote Luca and people are saying that he's a generational player, you're talking about his effect on the offense. And I think that you're now seeing Trey young, being surrounded by shooters, being surrounded by competent coaching. That's another thing. If you're going to compare the two together, beside by co competent coaching and you are seeing what he can do. I mean, he's dominating. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question really quick. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to stay on this topic too long, but if you give Atlanta, if you give Luca uh, Atlanta's roster, do you think that they beat the Clippers? If I give Luca Atlanta's roster, do they beat the? So you Clippers? take away, you take Trey Young off the roster, and you you put uh, Luca Doncic on the roster, and that team has to play the Clippers. Do you think? I think I think as uh, today Atlanta's roster is better than Dallas's roster. I, know, I think that's not even you can't even debate. That. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. If that if that's what you're asking me today, to, yes, is better Atlanta's, than Atlanta's, Atlanta's roster. Roster is superior to uh, now. Now, I, I do they does that roster beat the Clippers? I don't know because Atlanta does not defend it. They all. have a better opportunity. I think they have. They a have a better opportunity, but Atlanta struggles to defend on the perimeter as well. So it's just like you, you're going to run into the same conundrum. Who's guarding Paul George? Who's guarding uh, Kawhi? You know, uh, Hunter is coming back off an injury. He can only guard one of those guys. You know, so you know you're having a you're gonna have a situation where Bogdanovich is guarding one of those guys, or you know, it's just it's bad news. But if you're asking me whose roster is better today, and I think you know this is the shame of the Bogdanovich deal falling through for for Milwaukee because we've seen the play of him. I, I always liked him. I always thought he was better. I live. We both live in the Sacramento area. I was aghast when the Kings let him go for nothing. I thought he's always been a better player than Buddy Hill. 
Um, I do not understand the GM just letting the asset yeah, go. I, Sacramento Kings. Nothing yeah. They do, nothing they do yeah. makes sense. But yeah, I don't understand how you let an asset yeah. like that walk. Um, they said that we're trying to save money so we can build around De'Aaron Fox. Like, no one takes your money, except if it's an overpay. I just, what the hell are you talking about? Um, so, uh, yeah, Bogdanovich, he's been great. He's been fantastic. Uh, so yeah, if you're asking me that, yeah, the, the Hawks are a better team than him. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I mean, to, to, to give the quick breakdown, I mean, the Knicks. Uh, obviously, you know, people were again, people were, ah, I'm close to and I talk to about sports were mad at me about Julius Randle, and I've always said that Julius Randle is not that kind of player, and you see him now. Shout out to him for the kind of season he had. He's obviously improved his game. He's become a, a refined scorer. But like I said, when you lock in, a team has to lock in on you, and they know that they're playing you the next. Uh, four to seven games and they can game plan for you you start to see the areas that he are defeat that are he's deficient in and mm-hmm. they're they're glaring areas he doesn't he cannot post up he he has a long wind up uh, uh jump shot uh, he can't really finish over contact a lot of his game is predicated on bully ball and being able to get to the rim and uh finish over uh smaller guys but his game is not conducive to winning so um at least winning in the sense of being a team that you know, can rely on him as the number one option in the playoff series and to say, hey, we're going to win this series. So I don't think um, any team that they played this season um, in the playoffs out, uh, outside of maybe Boston, they could have beaten seven games. And I think ultimately um, Tata, Kemba, and Smart would have probably won that series. But So we're, we're, gonna think we're getting this live. I just saw Joel Embiid just left the game with a back injury, fell down on the back about eight minutes into the game, uh, we're ending, uh, there's three minutes left in the half, and he's still not back on the floor. So, uh, you know, we've talked about, huh? Something to look out for. Yeah, it's definitely something to look out for because they play that series without Joel Embiid. Obviously, that changes everything. Yeah, I would say I would say that if they have Joel Embiid's not there, that changes everything because um, now, you know, you don't have to, you know, figure out what you're going to do for uh, as far as guarding him, whether you're going to, let Capella play him one on one, or you're going to um, double him um, because uh, yeah. he just commands too much attention. He's he, he he he's so good. He can't he you know he literally has destroyed all three of the Wizards centers. Um, mm-hmm. He just has too many moves. He's too good. Um, he can he, he can do everything on the floor. He can shoot from the outside. He can post up. He has a good. I love his face up game, uh, just because he's so strong and he can go through your body. Um, he, he just has he has the whole package literally. So uh, if he's not there for that series, and or or if he's out for any extended ter- a period of time, you have to like the Hawks in that series. But I do like the Hawks to win Game Five. I think that they'll go on the road. I think it will be a close game. I think the fans will, um, the Knicks players will feed off the energy of them being back home. Obviously, any game in the Garden is going to rock. So with their backs against the the wall, you know the fans will be loud. They'll be energetic. So I think that the the Knicks players will feed off of that. But ultimately. I think that the Hawks will end that series. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely see what's, what's happened. I think that just generally in the league, besides the Lakers and Suns, uh, and obviously uh, Portland and Denver, I think the majority of these series are look like they're concluding and getting to the end here. So, we're going to be having the Eastern Conference semis, uh, Western Conference semis breakdowns up sooner than later here. Uh, overall, with this first round, uh, it's been a bit disappointing. I would say I don't think that any of these series has been as interesting as I expected them to be. Uh, but I think the, the next conference semis, especially uh, with the Bucks and Brooklyn, I think we're going to get some some really good conference semifinal matchup. So um, that's go ahead, and we're going to end that. Uh, so definitely look out for the Western Conference breakdown. Like I said, the semifinals breakdown is going to be up pretty soon. Definitely hit subscribe. The good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to start breaking down every NBA team uh, that didn't make the playoffs or has been eliminated for the playoffs. Look out for that as well. Um, and we're going to keep hitting you guys with content. Do you have any questions, comments? Definitely hit uh, the comment button. Live them. We'll respond to them all. Uh, Eric, you got anything to say before we get out of here? No, uh, just, you know, I like to wish uh, uh, um, health and safety for all the players. It's kind of unfortunate to see these players go down in the playoffs. And a lot of these players, um, they have, uh, you know, championship aspirations like, um, you know, you, you talk about, you know, Milwaukee and um, losing DiVincenzo and, uh, you know, Joel B going down and um, Anthony Davis. So uh, just, you know, wish the players some, 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 some health and some safety so that, um, they can continue on um, their playoff runs. Uh, you hate to see these injuries because, like I said, a lot of these teams um, 
have very serious uh, aspirations of winning the title this year. So hopefully everyone can stay upright and we can uh, uh, we can finish these playoffs off the right way. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, thank you for everybody tuning in. Definitely hit subscribe. We'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. Yep.